Charleston is a great city. There's no city like it in America. And every vista of view is really a thing of beauty. When Hurricane Hugo came through, I was right at City Hall, and we felt the full brunt of the hurricane. It was coming at us. This was a killer storm. We got citizens out and evacuated, but the power of a Category 4 hurricane is impossible to imagine. Hurricane Hugo taught everyone a great lesson about climate change and high tide and storm surge. It was a devastating time for the city of Charleston. During that time, I think the mayor really stepped up and showed his true leadership. The devastation that I saw going around the city was something I never imagined I would see. But I knew and I said that morning in front of City Hall that this city would rebuild, and it did. Charleston has always had a special relationship with water. In the 1800s, we started measuring tidal elevations in Charleston. And since that time, we've seen approximately a foot of rise every 100 years. In the 1970s, we were seeing two to five floods every year. Scientists are now telling us that by 2045, we could possibly have 180 tidal floods a year. I was born and raised in the city of Charleston, and uh, I'd say 69 years, I experienced practically all the high tides and practically all the storms. Before, in the early days, kids would have to walk through water up to their knees. Their sneakers and shoes are wet, and when they go to class, they would have to take them off. In this neighborhood, water used to be practically up to here sometimes. So you see the difference between this house and this house here. This is within code now for this particular area here. All of this come about of Hurricane Hugo and the FEMA code to make sure every, any residents are being built have to be at, at, at this particular height. We're called the Low Country for a reason. Um, we're surrounded by water and people love it here. My husband and I purchased this home in Burns Downs in the mid 1980s. As the area grew, there was a need for a larger highway system here. And when the stormwater would run off the highway, it really creates a river and the street would become a lake. The water would come under their houses and start to infringe on the integrity of the home itself. Most cities have the benefit of gravity where drainage is going downhill. We have none of that in Charleston. So what we had to do was engineer a system where the water is collected into shafts that go down under the city to a depth of 140 feet. And then it's pumped up into the river, even at high tide, it has the power to pump it up. So it's very expensive engineering process, but it's really the only way to do it. When Mayor Riley came into office in 1975, that was when they commissioned the first major floodplain management plan for the city. It gave us a way to take something that was very large and break it down into steps to begin to work on the problem. We now have under construction or have constructed about $240 million worth of improvements, and that's far more than the city's annual operating budget. So we created revenue streams many years ago a stormwater utility fee, small increase in property taxes, and then matching funds when we could get it to be able to put these pieces into place. So when the drainage system was designed in our neighborhood, this large street right here was where they put the huge pipe underneath for all the stormwater to come from all the side streets. This is an example of a drain right here, and the water is held here until it can slowly work its way out into retention area and then ultimately to the marsh and the river. Okay, this is the shaft that they're putting in for the drainage project and you can see how deep it is to tie into the tunnel and to the pumping station that the city is going to build in between the two bridges. It would be a, a great help to the flooding in this particular area. So the master drainage plan has been successful. We've got a lot more to do, but we've completed about 40% of the recommendations and those areas that we've addressed are seeing less flooding and less impact. We're also looking at softer edges of the city, areas where we may be able to implement some green infrastructure to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff and reduce the amount of water that we need to deal with. The nature-based solutions are always the best. They break the wave action, they create other marine and aquatic life around it, and then we also have required increased setbacks so there's more land to have natural accretion through the grasses that grow in that zone. 
In addressing the, the challenge of gradual sea level rise, you bring to the table a wide variety of groups, neighborhood organizations, nonprofits, the state, and federal resource agencies and others. But we can't just talk about it. We've got to put the plans in place and then we got to help create and generate the public will to do it. We need to work on it together. It's a big problem that affects a lot of folks. And it's also important that FEMA, through its National Flood Insurance Program, support ways to reduce the risk so we're not continually paying out huge insurance payouts and people are not living in fear of flooding. You know, we're not the only community dealing with gradual sea level rise. This is a national problem. A small community that is facing these challenges just can't do it with their own resources. And a national government has an investment in that. And the public increasingly is understanding the reality of gradual sea level rise. The coastal environment is a beautiful and fragile environment. And it's a privilege to be here. I think we need to respect where we are and live there in a way that creates a responsibility from our end for the privilege. As a lifelong resident, I love the flavor of Charleston. And before, Charleston was a diamond in the rough, and Mayor Raleigh put it on the map. You begin to solve a problem by embracing it and recognizing it. More weather events, more flooding, and gradual sea level rise. All of the information tells us that's going to increase. We understand the challenge now better. We've got this very good plan in place with great community buy-in, and it works. It's a good, sound, logical blueprint to preserve and protect this beautiful city for future generations.